This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Tuesday, December 17. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Barbados continues to make good progress in implementing its comprehensive homegrown economic reform program. That was the assessment from the International Monetary Fund at the end of the 2019 Article 4 consultation of the Executive Board and the second review under the IMF's Extended Fund Facility. Managing Director Tao Zhang says all quantitative performance criteria, indicative targets and structural benchmarks for the end of September were met. According to him, the fiscal adjustments continues as programmed with the primary surplus targeted at 6% of GDP for the fiscal year 2019-2020 and subsequent years. He added that the planned adoption of a fiscal rule in 2020 will help sustain the adjustment effort over the medium and long term. Zhang also noted that strengthening disaster resilience is key to boosting medium-term economic prospects. While praising Barbados's restructuring efforts so far, the IMF chief added that structural reforms are also needed to unlock the island's growth potential. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mia Motley on Monday hailed her administration's success so far in restructuring the country's debt. She was speaking at the end of a walkthrough of Port House St. John. Motley said another 10 garbage trucks are due to arrive here before the end of the week. And according to her, this was made possible due to the debt restructuring program. And by restructuring our domestic and external debt, we have saved the country $1.2 billion a year. Government's entire wage bill is 800 million 780 to be precise for central government, and then about another 400 million for the state owned enterprises. Now, tell me if we didn't restructure our debt, how we would have saved 1.2 billion dollars in this country per year. And over the next four years, it becomes almost 4.8 billion dollars going forward. In other news, Sunday's drowning of a young mother and her son has prompted more calls for more lifeguards on the island's beaches. On Sunday, 27-year-old Nayoka Howard and her 5-year-old son Nico Roach of Emerald Park West, 6 Roads, St. Philip, lost their lives while sea bathing at Welch's Beach in Christchurch. Environment Minister Trevor Prescott says he plans to meet with the management of the National Conservation Commission to discuss the matter. Prescott told Barbados today there is now an increased risk of drownings as more people are going to the beach. And he says the presence of lifeguards could make the difference. We, 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 know, that, we know, I think it was last year or early this year, we had, um, we had two close cases of persons drowning on the beach. Um, the, there and um, to some extent that triggered a, a, a response. Right? Right. Um, uh, and we, we understand that we got to upgrade the facilities um, on the, the little, like, large huts. We recognize the increase in numbers on the beaches. There are lots of beach chairs, lots of tours. People are going to be out on vacation shortly. And lots of people go to the beach now um, for relaxation. So obviously, we have to be concerned with saving the lives of people. Um, I have to look carefully now and see uh, out of what I have there between the estimates how I can respond. Meanwhile, staff at the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation are struggling to come to terms with Nick Nayoka's passing. Veteran broadcaster Anthony Admiral Nelson remembered her as a dedicated worker who was well loved by all. I've worked at CBC for so many years of my life. Uh, I have never seen the staff respond in the way they did to the, to the passing of a colleague. I've, I've never seen that. I, I mean, and I've been there for a long time. It meant for me that she, she probably touched maybe about 90% of the people because of her whole, her entire attitude at work. And she was one of us. She was never afraid. She understood the business of broadcasting from this point of view. For instance, if you were reading the news, um, the news was coming up, let's say, at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, and you ran downstairs to get something. She would tell you, go go ahead and do what you're doing. I will bring it for you, or you will come back after the news. And most likely, she will come upstairs and bring it. 
I mean, it was a, it was a, she never had a hang up or a problem with the job at hand. She understood the job that the people around her were doing and that is how she was and we loved her for that. The United States Agency for International Development, USAID, has pledged more financial and technical assistance to help the region strengthen its response to natural disasters. USAID Administrator for the Caribbean, Mark Green, stated that his government has agreed to pledge 10 million U.S. dollars to the cause. These new resources will support activities that minimize the damage of disasters, reduce the loss of life, and enhance response efforts. At the local level, that means things like training for first responders, education and messaging campaigns for communities, and the development of localized emergency response plans. At the national level, the assistance will help to harmonize policies and operational procedures across agencies, ensure that facilities and equipment meet international standards, and facilitate post-disaster performance reviews and assessment. He added that USAID will also be making a substantial contribution towards the development of renewable energy facilities in the Caribbean. Including a five-year Caribbean energy initiative aimed at lowering electricity prices, with which we have seeded an initial, uh, an initial $5 million dollars as well as a $25 million regional loan guarantee to spur lending to households, small and medium enterprises for renewable energy, power generation, and overall job creation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. From the region, Cuba's government says it is prepared if the Donald Trump administration decides to sever diplomatic relations. But a top diplomat says the government in Havana is hoping that does not come to pass. The two countries re-established relations five years ago this week under former Democratic President Barack Obama following half a century of hostility, a stance that earned the United States lots of goodwill from Latin America which had been clamoring for years for a detente. Washington loosened trade and travel restrictions, Obama visited Havana, and the old Cold War foes looked on track to fully, to fully normalizing their relationship. But under Republican Trump, all that has changed. Amid an attack on socialism in Latin America, his administration has not only tightened restrictions, such as banning U.S. cruises again, but even imposed sanctions, as it had never resorted to before. On the international scene, Chinese President Xi Jinping met with the Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam in Beijing on Monday, saying he recognized the courage to govern the Asian financial hub in the most difficult times. We get more in this Reuters report. Hong Kong media have speculated that Lam's talks with Xi could yield fresh directives on the city's political crisis, including a possible cabinet reshuffle or a replacement for Lam. We will continue to be unwavering in supporting you to lead the Hong Kong special administrative government to govern in accordance with the law, supporting the Hong Kong police to firmly uphold the law, and hope people from all walks of life in Hong Kong will unite and bring the development of Hong Kong back to the right track. His comments came the morning after Hong Kong police fired multiple rounds of tear gas in late night clashes, as the former British colony's worst political crisis in decades dragged into its seventh month. 
And that's news this morning, but for the very latest, visit our website www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good morning.